Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Foods UK. It's the uh, 26th of November today and I'm in Herefordshire and yes, I am in another graveyard. Um, that's just because graveyards seem to be very good places for mushrooms around here. Uh, and I know it doesn't cause the inhabitants any offence. So uh, what I'm going to tell you about today is the main mushroom really to look out for over the next month or so because it's an extremely common mushroom. I have used it in other videos before but it's never had a dedicated video all to itself so it's getting that one today the weather has just changed we've had a pretty warm start to autumn but we're now getting freezing frosty nights and we're getting very very cold days it's very cold today which means that most big macroscopic mushrooms kind of go to bed for the year because they can't handle being frozen but there's a select few that can and the main one the most common one that grows all over the country is this one down here and I'm going to show you quite how common it is right now because we'll start off down here with the first of our wood bluets a nice youngster that's what you see from the cap. The cap can be very purple, or very lilac, but soon, very quickly actually, as they start to grow, the cap will become a bit brown like this. But you always get that purple underside, the lilac purple gills and the beautiful lilac purple stem. Now, if I cut this in half, I'll show you what it looks like nice and colourful all the way through and quite fibrous. Now we're going to follow this ring round, there's six or seven just there. If you stand up Attila, you might be able to see a dark stripe in the grass going round here. That's not because these are mycorrhizal with grass, that's because they're saprotrophic. They're uh, rotting down things underneath here that's making the grass more healthy. And here we've got one that's a bit bigger, as you can see, brown on the cap. But that same beautiful colouring underneath. There are some lookalikes for this mushroom. As we follow it round, round this stripe, we'll see some more youngsters, not going to be picking. Look at that, hiding under the grass, nearly trod on that one. Completely hidden. Here's some youngsters, and here's one that's showing that purple colouring even more vibrantly. There we go now. As we get round to a bigger one, so that ring kind of goes around that way, but another ring over here, Attila starts this way. Working our way around this, we've already seen about 30 mushrooms. This ring is packed. Here's another group all hiding. And another beautiful one here. Possibly a tiny little bit of maggot damage in this one, but this is uh, the one I'm going to use to try and help you rule out the potentially semi-toxic lookalikes. So um, the bluets, oh my goodness, there's one. You have to really watch where you tread around here, Attila. Uh, the, the wood bluets don't really have any dangerous lookalikes, but there are some lookalikes in the Cortinarius genus. So the larger purple Cortinarius, including the Cortinarius purpurascens, the bruising webcap, and the Cortinarius violaceus, I suppose, the violet webcap. Um, they can look quite similar to the bluets. And in the first part of bluet season, they are a potential lookalike. But after you have the first few frosts, most of the Cortinarius will go to bed. So when it gets to this time in November, normally you don't have any real lookalikes for, for the wood bluet to, to worry about. The um, family members, uh, including the Lepista sordida, can uh, look quite similar but they are all edible, so no problem there whatsoever. The way to tell, if you can, because it's quite tricky, whether you've got a Cortinarius or a wood bluet in the early part of bluet season is to have a look 
around this area of the stem. And with the Cortinarius, when they've opened up, you should see a sort of rusty brown stain around where a skirt would be. And that's the uh, staining of the color of the spores. The spores on the Cortinarius are rusty brown and you should be able to see them somewhere on the stem. Um, it doesn't matter too much though because some of those purple Cortinarius are considered edible and none of them are considered highly toxic. It's just none of them are considered as culinarily delightful as your wood bluets. So this really keeps going round there's another 20 or 30 maybe more mushrooms there let's skip over this way and start looking at some more mature ones here we go one right there and a couple here so here's the difference in coloring between the gills when they're young and old you can still see the violet nature to the gills here, but it's paler and it will get paler even than that. All of these are still in good edible condition though, even though we've got some slug damage on the top of this one. And to most, they are considered a gourmet mushroom. And considering how plentiful they are, let's keep following this ring round. I've positioned a few here. There's one that is possibly in need of uh, cooking today if I was gonna take that one, but here we go. The ring is still going. Here we've got a large one, still in perfect condition. And round here we've got possibly the biggest and this isn't even the end of the ring, but there you go, that's a fully mature wood bluet. Lapista nuda, formerly Clytosibe nuda. And there is that beautiful colouring. Now, this is a mushroom that has a, not only a, a pretty unique look at this time of year, but it has a pretty unique smell. It's not a normal mushroomy smell. It has a, a distinctively perfumey smell. It's not like other mushrooms that you, uh, that you buy in the shops for sure. Although you can buy this one in certain places. Um, it is a mushroom that when you, when you use it for culinary purposes, don't ever eat it raw. It has to be cooked and pretty well cooked. And even then, some people, it's quite rare, but some people find it indigestible and it can give them a tiny bit of gastric upset. So um, we do take a little bit of care with our bluets, but it's one that is sold in uh, certain places without any warnings um, and there's no serious consequences for even the people that show the most allergic reactions to it as far as I know. Now for me, even though it's considered one of the best culinary mushrooms around and certainly it's abundant at this time of year. Um, it's a mushroom that I, I don't find to be my favorite. Um, I tend to dry these and use them in stews and soups and things like that rather than ever fry them up fresh. If you do fry them up fresh, there's always a lot of water content. So you end up having to flick that water out of the frying pan no, to, to make sure that you've got fried mushrooms, unless you kind of want stewed mushrooms. And when you end up with stewed bluets, which I find happens quite a lot, they're, they're not that nice. Um, but in the next couple of weeks, I'm hopefully gonna do a few videos with uh, some chefs who might be able to change my mind because this is certainly a mushroom that's highly prized by chefs all over the country. Uh, in France, it's called the Pied Bleu and you've probably eaten it in restaurants in the UK where they will use the French names. I think that's because they make the mushrooms sound uh, more tasty or possibly more expensive. Uh, it gets called the Blue Leg in certain parts of the UK as well. Um, it grows in almost any type of woodland. It will grow in leaf litter. It's a saprotrophic mushroom. So anywhere there's something for this mushroom to rot, it can grow. Um, 
and uh, that makes it one that is potentially one you guys can cultivate for yourselves. So people make what are called bluet bombs, which just means getting loads of bluet material, loads of uh, woodland detritus, you know, leaf litter and things like that, mixing them all up in a giant big bag or bin, and then just bombing that in certain places around your garden. And you'll find bluets growing out of, you know, piles of old leaf litter and old, uh, you know, garden waste. So. Uh, yeah, find some this season, make yourself a bluet bomb, and who knows, you might have some bluets in your own garden uh, next year. This year, there's enough in this ring uh, to keep me going, I think probably until Christmas. So we're going to pick a few today, leave the youngsters, wait for them to grow, probably come back in a couple of days and pick some more. And I highly recommend uh, that you go out and look for these for yourselves because they are extremely common, extremely easy to identify, and they make going out in the cold days in November and December just something a little bit more fun to do. Anyway, if you want to find out more, go to wildfooduk.com and watch this channel over the next couple of weeks, and hopefully I'll do some videos on how to cook and prepare these mushrooms as well. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.